This is the second video lecture for section 3.6 on an introduction to cryptography. In this lecture, I'll be talking about the bifid cipher. So last time we talked about substitution ciphers. Now remember that a cipher is just a systematic way to encode and decode messages. Now in substitution ciphers, what we did was we consistently replaced every letter of the alphabet with a different letter. And when I say consistently here, what I meant was that every letter, for example, every E in the message would get replaced with a J. And that was consistent throughout the entire message. So every single E gets replaced by a J throughout the entire message. But that consistency is the weakness in the substitution cipher method. We can use frequency analysis to break the code if the message is long enough. One of the reasons why consistency is a problem for substitution ciphers is that the substitution cipher does not rearrange the letters in our message. So that if we have some lucky guesses as to what the letters in our encoded message represent, we can start piecing together words by using our knowledge of the English language. So more advanced ciphers, like the one we're going to talk about in this video, they involve rearranging the letters in our message to try to avoid that problem. So let's get started understanding what the bifid cipher is. So the bifid cipher is a method that uses a device called a Polybius square. So this thing over here, that's the Polybius square. We're going to be using this to encode and decode our messages. So bifid cipher is the method that uses this square. And what's this square going to do? Well, we're going to put the alphabet into that grid. Now, you might notice that there's only 25 spaces. There's five rows and five columns. Five times five is 25. So we don't actually have room for our entire alphabet. So what we're going to do is we're going to cheat a little bit. We're going to get rid of the letter J. And if our message happened to have any J's in it, we'll just replace those with the letter I. We need to find a way to fit all 26 letters into this grid. So that's how we're going to do it. Now, most messages don't contain the letter J. It's a pretty rare letter in the English language. And even if it does, when we decode our message and we see an I in place of a J, the message will still be pretty readable. OK, so the first step is to fill in this square. And so the easiest way to fill in the square is to just use the regular order of the alphabet, right? So we start with A in the upper left-hand corner, and we just go across each row, filling in the letters of the alphabet. Remember, notice here that I'm skipping over J, right? I go directly from I to K and then all the way to Z in the bottom right-hand corner. But if we want an extra layer of security, we can actually use a keyword to fill in this square rather than just using the alphabet in order. So for example, let's say we wanted to use the keyword confidential. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna over here on the side, I'm gonna write out the alphabet because I wanna keep track of which letters I've used, right? So actually I'm not gonna use J, right? We're skipping over J, K, L, M, Okay, so what do I mean by using this keyword? Well, what I mean is that starting in this upper left-hand corner, I'm gonna write out the letters of the word confidential, but I'm never gonna use the same letter twice. So let's see, O-N-F-I-D-E. All right, now there's another N, right? I'm up to this place in my keyword, but I've already got N in my grid, right? I've used C, I've used O, N, F, I, D, and E. I don't want to have a second N in my grid. I just want to have every letter of my alphabet except for J exactly once. So I'm going to skip over that N and go to the letter T. Now I've got another I, but I already have I. I already exists in my square, so I'm going to skip that as well. So I'm going to go A and then L. And again, I'm crossing out the letters that I've used up here so that I don't accidentally use the same letter twice. Now, in addition to the letters that I've crossed out, now I'm going to fill in the remaining letters in order. So the first letter of my alphabet that I haven't used yet is B, so I'm going to fill that in the beginning of the next row. So B, G, H, and I'm just going through the alphabet that I haven't used yet. Next I've got K, M, P, Q, R. Right, I shouldn't ever get to the end and have letters left over. So then I've got S, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. So no matter how you do this, whether you just use the alphabet in order or whether you use a keyword like we did here, eventually what you'll get is one of these Polybius squares with the alphabet filled in, again, missing the letter J. Okay, so now what do we do with the Polybius square? Well, before we actually use the square, for this to work, as we're gonna see, we need to know that our message has an even number of letters. 
So we have to count up the number of letters in the message that we're trying to encode and make sure that the number of letters is even. Now, if it's not, then we have to add an extra letter at the end. Usually we'll add the letter X just because again, X is gonna be sort of a dummy character. It's not gonna mean anything. And so when we decode our message and we see an X at the end, we're gonna know, oh, they needed to put that X there to make sure that there was an even number of letters. So if we wanted to encode the message, let's say the word retreat, that has seven letters. And since that seven is odd, we need to add an X to the end. So if we decoded our message and we saw that the message was retreat X, we know that the real message is retreat and the X was just put there just to make sure that there was an even number of letters. Okay, now is where the square comes in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take every message in our, uh, every letter in our message and we're going to look it up in our square. So for example, the first letter of our message retreat is the letter R. We find that in our table. It's in row four and column three. So the rows go across, right? So these are the row numbers, one, two, three, four, and five down here. These are the row numbers. And these up here, these are the column numbers. And we always go row and then column. The row number first, column number second. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to write those numbers vertically on top of each other. So here's my message, again, retreat with an X at the end. And again, you'll see in a minute why the X at the end has to be there, why we need to have an even number of letters. And then we take the next letter, E, lives here. It's in row two, column two. So we write two, two. T is in row two, column three. That's where the T is, so row two, column three. R is in row four, column three again. So we do have some consistency here, right? R is always gonna give me a four and a three, but as you'll see, that's actually not gonna be too much of a weakness here. E is two, two again. A is over here in row two, column four. T is two, three, we did that already. And then X is down here in row five, column three. So we get this little table of numbers. Looks something like this. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to rearrange these numbers. So we're going to write it so that instead of having these two rows, right, these two rows of numbers, we're going to take this second row of numbers and we're going to tear it off and put it up here to the right. So it's going to look like 4, 2, 2, 4, 2, 2, 2, 5. Where did I get that from? Those are these numbers. And then the second row of numbers, that's actually going to go down here to the right. So 3, 2, 3, 3, 2, 4, 3, 3. So here's the first row of my numbers, and here's the second row of my numbers. So I've rearranged the numbers now. So here are those numbers that we were just writing, and now I'm gonna put them in pairs. So I'm gonna, you see I'm grouped them together here. So the first two numbers in that list were four and two, so I'm kind of clumping those together, and then two, four, and so on. And now I'm gonna look up these numbers in my table again. So my first two numbers were four and two, so I find row four, column two, what letter is that? it's the letter Q. And then my next two numbers are two and four. So what letter is that? Row two, column four, that's the letter A. My next two numbers are two and two. I look up row two, column two, that's the letter E, and so on. Two five is L, three two is G, three three is H, two four is A again, and then three three is H again. So Q-A-E-L-G-H-A-H, -H, that's my encoded message. And again, we can tell this doesn't look anything like our original message. Now, what about decoding our message? We just reverse this process. So we look up each letter in our square, writing down the row and then the column. But when we do that, we're gonna write our numbers left to right. We're not gonna make that little chart. We're just gonna make a big long row from left to right. And then we're gonna split the message in half and put the second half below the first half. So before the encoding process, we had this sort of this grid of two rows of numbers and we tore off the second row and slipped it up next to the first row. For the reverse process, we're gonna have a big long row of numbers. We're gonna chop it in half and take that second half and write it below the first half. We're just doing that in reverse. And then we're gonna decode the message by looking up each letter in our square. So here's an example. So we've got this message here, looks like a bunch of nonsense, and it was encoded with a bifid cipher using a Polybius square based on the keyword Schwarzenegger. So we want to decode this message. The first thing we'll have to do is fill in our Polybius square. So here's our keyword. Again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write out the alphabet, 
And this is just going to help keep me keep track and make sure that I don't accidentally duplicate any letters. Oh, that should be an I. Remember, we're skipping over the letter J. H-I-K-L-M-N-O-P. Sing the alphabet song to yourself if you like. Hope you remember this. X, Y, Z. Okay. So again, what we do is we start writing these letters of this keyword. And the only thing we do is we just avoid duplicates. So S-C-H, W-A, R-Z. So far, so good. E, N, no duplicates. But now I've got another E. So I've got a second E. I don't write that out. And then I've got a G. I've got another E. I don't want to write that. And then I've got an R, so I don't want to write that either. So that's it for my keyword. And now whatever letters of my alphabet I didn't use, I fill those in in the normal order. So I used A, I used E, I used S, I used G, N, W, Z, R, let's see what else did I use? C, H, I think that's it. Yep, yeah, okay. So now we start with the letter B. So B, D, F, what am I doing? Right, I'm just taking the letters that I didn't use and fill those in. I, K, L, M, N, O, nope, not N, we already had N, get out of there. O, P, Q, T, U, V, X, Y. And again, you know that you did it right when you get to the end and you're out of letters in your alphabet, right? I've used up the entire alphabet except for J and I don't have any empty spaces in my square. If you get to the end and you still have some empty spaces or you've used a letter multiple times, you mess something up and you gotta go back and fix it. Okay, so now that we've got our square all set up, now we've got to look up all the letters in our message. So we're going to take this message, and I'm just going to do the first several letters for you here. But S A W A B T B K K S T V L A A A. Squeeze it in there. So I'm going to look up my S in my chart. Where is S? Well, it's in row one, column one. So I'm going to write out the numbers one, one. And then I'm going to find A. Where's A? So over here, row one column five. So I write one five. Where's my W? Well, that's in row one, column four. A is one one. Where's B? B is down here in row three, column one, and so on. So I'm going to write this out in a big long list going left to right. That list ends up looking like this. So here are my numbers. And now what I'm going to do is split this in half. Now, because it's a big long list of numbers, and I don't necessarily, I might try to sort of guesstimate it and eyeball it, but I want to make sure I have the exact halfway point. So I'm going to count how many pairs of numbers I have. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. This has to be an even number. This is where the even number thing comes in. So I've got 16 pairs of numbers. So after pair number 8, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, half of 16 is 8, that's where I'm going to chop my message in half. And this second half is going to go underneath the first half. So I write out my first half of numbers, 1, 1, 1, 5, 1, 4, 1, 5, 3, 1, 5, 1, 3, 1, 3, 5. And underneath that, I write the second list of numbers, and I want to line them up. So 3, 5, 1, 1, 5, 1, 5, 3, 4, 1, 1, 5, 1, 5, 1, 5. And now, as I'm reversing this process, now I'm going to think of the numbers in pairs like this. So that's how I'm going to now look up the numbers in my table to recover the original message. Okay, so here's my uh, group of numbers that I had from the previous slide. Now I'm just going to start looking them up. So now I've got the pair of numbers 1, 3. Remember, that's row 1, column 3. That's the letter H. So H is the first letter in my original message. 1, 5, what's that? Well, row 1, column 5, that's A. So I've got an A. Then I've got 1, 1, S. And then 5, 1, down here, column five, row 5, column 1. T, row one, column five, A, and if you're a fan of Schwarzenegger movies, you probably know what the rest of this message is going to be. And it's hasta la vista, baby. So again, we can put in the spaces, even though those have been removed, because we can read the message and understand what's going on. Okay, so the bifid cipher has a lot of steps, but these steps provide layers of security that make this much harder to break than the substitution methods that we talked about in the previous lecture. 
The bifid cipher relies on arranging and rearranging the pieces of our message. And in the next section, we're going to learn about how we can use mathematical calculations to encode and decode messages in a more secure way.